One of the things about coaching, and I'm gonna, I hope I don't sound too sanctimonious with this, but I listened this morning, I listened to Bob Lichty's talk on character, which I thought was a great talk. And one of the things that I, I've always preached everywhere I've been, and one of the things that I, we don't teach kids to cheat, we don't have any pit rubs. I don't, now we might run kind of close together, but we don't teach it as a pick route, and we certainly don't even necessarily diagram it that way. I don't teach holding. To me, holding is a crutch for poor technique and poor footwork. You go back and you look at your film, and I'll, I will almost guarantee you that any time you get called for holding, it's because that kid was not in the proper position using the proper technique. He had poor footwork or he used poor technique. You don't have to hold it. And I, I'm just going to throw this out and then I'll get off the subject. What's the difference between teaching your kids to hold and deflating the football? <laughs> okay? Enough said. All right, let's get into this. One of the, to me, the most important thing that you can teach is stance. Because everything that you do starts with stance. And the stance is offensive scheme specific. Okay? If I'm a zone team or I'm a, a shotgun drop back pocket passing team, I'm going to have my kids line up with their outside foot back, pretty big standard, because now I've got a kick slide, punch, kick slide, and all that kind of stuff. We don't do that. We might, our stance is specific to what we do offensively. Center stance. His feet are parallel, they're shoulder width apart, and we use a left hand, or if he's right handed, left hand on the ground, right hand on the ball. Because we've got to have some weight forward. We have about 55% of our weight forward. Because we have got to sprint off the ball flat back with our ass on fire. Play the game on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage. Okay? So he's in a balanced stance, opposite hand on the ground, dominant hand with the football. We grip the football with our thumb across the top lace so that when he snaps at half turn, it comes across in the quarterback in the right spot. Guards and tackles. We line up, our, our stance is armpit width apart. Now you're going to have kids, you can tell them to stand there with your feet parallel, armpit width apart, and they're going to stand like this, because they have no concept of how wide their armpits are. So you got to coach them how wide their armpits are, okay? And then we're going to take our inside foot, we have inside foot back, inside hand down. So if I'm a left guard or left tackle, I'm going to be in a right-handed stance. If I'm a right guard, right tackle, I'm going to be in a left-handed stance. So if I'm on the left side of the line, I'm going to drop my inside foot toe to instep, no deeper, okay? Again, the deeper this, this back foot is, because we're stepping, unless he's an outside shape, play side, we're always stepping with our inside foot, okay? So if my foot is too deep, that makes my first step have to be too long. The longer that first step's in the air, the longer it takes to get the second step in the air and on the ground. So we want eight inch steps, we want toe to end step relationship, okay? We want good Z in the knees. Now I'm 58 years old, so if I can get back up from getting down to show you this, I'm ahead. We want to put our down hand on the ground, on our fingertips, so that if our outside eye or our inside eye fell out, it would land right next to our thumb. With about 55% of the weight on the down hand, flat back, good Z in the knees. So I want to be right about like this, okay? What we do with our off hand, we put it on our calf like this. So we're from here, we're coming right up, ready to strike. Why do we use a narrow stance? Because we are sprinting off the ball straight ahead most of the time. Or we are stepping inside, backside zone scoop, or we're pulling. We have our inside foot back, inside hand down, because anybody that's ever played or coached offensive line knows it's easier to pull to the downhand side. It's easier to step at an angle to the downhand side. And when we veer release, which our guards and our guards have to do on midline tackles on inside veer, it's we want to step and be able to rip through and, and get that veer release. So inside hand down, inside foot back. Why the narrow stance? Let me ask you something. How many Olympic sprinters do you see getting the blocks with their feet this far apart? The, we want to get things going this way. If I'm play side guard, we're running inside here, and I'm covered, I've got to get off the ball and get vertical movement. I've got to play the game on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage. So I want to get my body, my feet, in a position where I can get vertical 
to get after that, okay? So that's that's our stance. Inside foot down, or inside foot back, inside hand down, toe to step relationship, 55% of the feet on the, or 55% of the weight on the down hand. One of the things that I'm looking at changing coming up this year, I've always believed in crowding the line of scrimmage. Part of the reason is, could you stand up here for a second, Coach? If I'm a tapper and I'm off the line of scrimmage like Navy and Georgia Tech are, and we're running inside here to this side, the farther off the ball I am, the more steps it's going to take me to get past him, and the more time he has to react and squeeze me down and keep me off the linebackers, blah, blah, blah. If I'm up a little tighter, now I've got a chance to maybe get by him on the second step. He doesn't have as much reaction time. Thank you. The problem with that is backside, trying to scoop noses and scoop backside three techniques, that kind of thing. The other problem is pulling. Uh, I've never had a counter option in the, in the trap that comes off it, like Georgia Tech ran so well against uh, uh, Mississippi State, wasn't it? In the bowl game, you just kicked their ass. I was just, yeah, great. But I, I met, I've been fortunate that I've been able to develop a relationship with Ashley Ingram at Navy over the last, I don't know, eight, ten years. And I met with him for an hour and a half a couple of weeks ago down in Louisville at the National American Football Coaches Association Convention to learn some nuances on how to teach that. I'm going to put it in. So anyway, backing up the guards in terms of the pull on that. So I'm, I'm looking at maybe backing off a little bit further. I'm not totally sold on that. But again, we've got, you've got to kind of play that by ear and see what's going to work that way. Okay, drills that we do. And these are drills that when I, when I go through the teaching progression, or dry block teaching progression, we don't do that throughout the season. We do that during preseason. The rest of this stuff we pretty much do early in the season. We'll do it every Tuesday and Wednesday. Once we get past the second, third game, we'll do it every Tuesday because I think you continue to have to rep this sort of thing in order to keep going and, and get the guys going. One of the things that I learned a few years ago that I really like is we'll do push-up starts in the shoot, okay? I'm a big shoot guy. We're looking down on the shoots here. And what we'll do for our push-up starts is all along here, we usually have, we usually have about 15 offensive linemen on our team. So our lines will be about three deep, or when we're holding the bags two deep and rotate. They'll, they'll get here, they'll literally start out on the ground, and I'll, sit, and I'll say set, and they'll push up, and they'll be in a push up position, and then they have to sprint through the chutes from a push up position. Now, what is that teaching? Because again, I think everything you do should be for the sake of teaching them something that's going to carry over to what they need to do on Saturday or Friday night. If you're doing drills just for the sake of doing drills, I think you're wasting time, okay? So what does a push-up start teach them? For one thing, in our system, in true triple option football, you got to play with your weight forward. you got to play with your pads ahead of your hips. you got to play flat back. So by doing the push-up starts and they have to accelerate, basically what we're doing is we're starting with their weight forward. And they have to learn to sprint their feet to catch up with their body so they don't fall on their face. They learn to accelerate their feet, just like we want them to do when they come out of their stance. So it's a foot acceleration drill. You get, they get down there, they get there, you say sit, then go, and they're sprinting through. The young kids, they'll take about 14 steps before their hands ever leave the ground. I mean, their feet will be underneath their chin before they leave the ground, which is why you want to do it through the chute so they don't stand up. As they get used to it and they get the concept, now their hands are coming off the ground about the time they're putting their second step down and they're getting the idea, okay? So push-up starts is, is one thing that we'll do, and we will do that all year long, at least one day a week, usually on Tuesday, because that's our heavy day once we get into game week and get into the season, okay? So we'll start out with push-up starts. Kids hate it, so you know it's a good drill. 